You're planning your trip to the Swiss Alps near Interlaken, but you're starting to realize that choosing the best time of year to visit isn't as obvious as you might think. You wanna maximize your experiences, enjoy perfect weather with minimal crowds, and to top it all off, you wanna do it on a budget too. But does this idyllic time of year even exist? Hey, we're Jana and Brett, and we've called this beautiful slice of Switzerland our adopted home for the last two summers. But we're not just here for our pure enjoyment. We're here to help you maximize your trip to Switzerland while minimizing your budget and planning time. So today we're gonna to help you determine when is the best time of year to visit based on the questions that you have asked us in the comments, like what's the weather like? When's the cheapest month to visit or the most expensive month to visit? And when do the trains run or when are the lifts open? We'll answer these questions month by month using real data, but you know we're gonna give you more than just the facts, right? So after working through the calendar with you, we'll share exactly when we would choose to visit based on sightseeing priorities and travel preferences that are way more personal than any amount of research. So are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Let's go. As we work through the calendar, here's what we'll highlight for each month using data for Interlaken since that's the hub of the region. Average high temperature. Average number of days with sunshine. Average days with precipitation like rain or snow average cost of an Airbnb during the month, and which railways and cable cars are open or closed. Keep in mind though that these averages only tell some of the story. This region has some extreme weather changes, so when you visit, it may not look exactly like these averages. And also when you change altitudes, that can change the weather too. So just use these numbers as a guide to help you plan your trip, but then just commit to having a great time no matter what the weather throws at you. It's no surprise that the first month of the year is also the coldest, with an average high temperature of 36 degrees, seven days with sunshine, and nine days with precipitation. It's also the fourth least expensive month based on Airbnb data. During January, you'll find that most of the important mountain trains and cable cars are running, with the exceptions being the ones that run only in summer, such as the funicular to Harder Kulm, the cogwheel train to Schienige Platte, and the steam train to the Brienzer Rothorn. The Berner Oberlin Regional Pass, our favorite, won't be available for a few more months, but in the past few years, a winter version of the Top of Europe Pass has been available. If you love snow or snow sports, then January is obviously a great month to visit, and there are even sledding, snowshoeing, and winter hiking tracks too. February looks a lot like January in a lot of ways. The average high temperature is slightly warmer at 40 degrees. You're likely to see snow or rain just as often as in January, but it has one of the lowest amounts of total precipitation for the entire year. It's not typically as sunny with an average of just five sunny days, but there are fewer days in February, so there's that. A benefit of traveling in February is that it's the cheapest month to book on Airbnb. And as for rail operation and train passes, it's pretty much the same availability as January. Something to keep in mind though is that the schools typically close for a week or two in February, which means a lot of Swiss use this as a ski holiday. So if you're planning to come here to go skiing, you might just want to keep that in mind, especially how it could impact the prices and the crowds. March is kind of a weird month in a lot of ways. Winter is starting to say goodbye, especially at lower elevations, but it really isn't spring yet either. There's an average high temperature of 48 degrees in Interlaken with 10 days of sunshine and 11 days with precipitation but your experience could really vary depending on where you visit. Lower elevation ski areas such as Oceanense and the Niederhorn wrap up their winter seasons and close for maintenance by the end of the month. And Airbnb prices are starting to pick up too, but it's still the fifth least expensive month of the year. April really is the beginning of spring, especially at lower elevations. Interlaken sees an average high temperature of 54 degrees, but you'll probably see days in the 60s, especially later in the month. There's an average of 14 days with sunshine and 12 days with precipitation, but it also ranks seventh for your budget, indicating that international tourism is beginning to come out of its hibernation. The Top of Europe Summer Pass is usually available around the middle of this month. However, it's a bit complicated to plan your sightseeing this time of year, and that's because a lot of mountain cable cars and railways are closed part of the month for maintenance, including the Schilthorn. However, partway through the month, the harder cool bond opens up and this might be one of the best spots on a clear day to get a sunset view. And around this time, you'll likely see Lake Toon and Lake Brienne springing back to life with regular boat cruises. And while it's not a great time to go high up in the mountains for hiking or skiing, this might be one of the most beautiful times of year at lower elevations. Waterfalls and rivers flow freely, wildflowers begin to bloom, and it's all set against the backdrop of snow-capped mountains. Keep in mind that the schools close for a week or two around Easter, kind of for like a spring break holiday. So you might find more Europeans traveling and some of the smaller shops and restaurants might be closed for that time as well. 
I know this is a lot of technical information, but when you're planning a trip to the mountains, this is the stuff you need to know. So we've created a free download that has all of the weather stats and Airbnb info we've already referenced, plus a comprehensive chart of 23 trains, cable cars, and funiculars throughout the Jungfrau region, plus which months they're opened and closed. You can find the link to the download in the description below, but be sure to finish watching first and then go grab the handy download. But now let's keep going because we're about to enter peak tourism season in the Swiss Alps. May feels more like the springtime you might be used to, with average high temperatures of 64 degrees and plenty of days well into the 70s. It also rains like the springtime you might be used to, with just 11 days of sunshine, but 19 days with precipitation, making it the rainiest month of the year. Maybe that's why they call it spring? But as colleges in the US wrap up their spring semesters, you'll see the return of more international tourists as well as higher prices on Airbnb. There are still times of maintenance for some of the mountain railways and cable cars, but very few of them are shut down for the entire month. The cable car and train from Lauterbrunnen to Muren is closed for a few weeks, but thankfully the Schilthornbahn is open once again, so you can reach Muren using that cable car instead. On top of that, the cogwheel train to Schiningeplatte and the gondolas to the beautiful blue lake at Oceanense are open again by the end of the month. And you'll finally be able to use our favorite train pass, the Berner Oberlin Regional Pass. Oh, and we forgot to mention that our free download also shows which train passes are available for every month of the year. So yeah, check that out. With June comes the official summer season, both in terms of tourism and in weather. Plus it's just my favorite season overall. The average high temperature is just 70 degrees, but you'll likely see temperatures reaching well up into the 80s at some point. June sees an average of 12 days with sunshine, but along with the heat, you'll also see plenty of rain. The first part of the month can still feel like spring depending on the year, but by the time you hit the middle of the month, we are definitely in high season. And that explains why this is the second most expensive month according to Airbnb data. A couple of mountain trains and lifts like the one to Amenhubel wait until the first or second weekend of the month to open for the summer season, but by the time you hit the middle of the month, everywhere you want to visit should be open. Schools break for the summer starting early in the month, which means you will definitely start noticing more people around, and that's not going to slow down anytime soon as we approach the month of July. July could probably be thought of as the highest of high season, and there are plenty of good reasons for that. Schools and universities are on break in Europe and North America, bringing tons of international travelers. The snow has melted at most higher elevations, making world-class hiking trails available all throughout the region, and the weather is warmest and the days are the longest of any time of the year. While the average high temperature is only 75 degrees, don't be surprised to see that thermometer stretch up into the high 80s or even the 90s. Your chances of sunshine tend to be higher than during the spring, but you're probably going to see your fair share of rain as well. Unfortunately, all that means that July is also the most expensive time to book an Airbnb. But along with higher prices and lots of daylight, you'll also have every summer activity imaginable at your disposal. All of the mountain trains and cable cars are running throughout the entire month. And this is also the perfect time for cruising on or swimming in the lakes. So if you're coming for summer sports activities and you're willing to pay a premium and endure the crowds, July is a safe choice. Moving on to August, it would be a mistake not to mention that the first day of August is the Swiss National Day, which is kind of like Independence Day in the United States. There are activities and parades and fireworks in nearly every single town and village in Switzerland, and we think this is such a fun time to visit. As you can imagine, a lot more of the Swiss will also be traveling at this time, and some of the smaller shops or restaurants might also be closed for the holidays, so be sure to keep that in mind. August has the same high temperature as July, and the first part of the month is almost certainly going to feel like the heat of summer. But as the month goes along, you might just find hints of fall temperatures around the corner. It also tends to be a little bit more stable than spring and early summer, with an average of 16 days of sun compared to 15 days with precipitation. August is the third most expensive month to visit on Airbnb, but all of the mountain trains and lifts will be open, which means you can enjoy all the summer activities of all kinds. By early September, schools are back in session in Switzerland, Europe, and North America, so you'll notice a discernible decrease in the number of tourists. The average high temperature drops back to 68, but there's normally still an abundance of sunshine and quite a bit less rain, and you'll probably see plenty of days with temperatures into the 70s. It's the fifth most expensive month on Airbnb, but all of the mountain trains and cable cars are still running, making it a solid option for those traveling on a budget who still want high mountain adventures. The past two years, we've noticed pretty drastic weather changes between the first and second half of the month. 
And while that might not be typical every year, it is worth mentioning that autumn really has arrived by the end of September. All that to say, if you crave warm temperatures and long sunny days, both are likely gone by the time the calendar switches to October. But to me, the blue September skies are just a little bit clearer, and this is one of our favorite times to visit this region. Speaking of October, this is the month where the locals enjoy being in their mountains. Schools are on break for a few weeks and most international tourists have packed up, which means October might be one of the most authentic times to visit the Jungfrau region. The weather tends to be pretty cooperative too, even though it's a bit cooler, with an average high of 57 and temperatures rarely reaching beyond the 60s. If you like sunshine and cooler temperatures, then this might just be the month for you. 22 days with sunshine compared to just eight with precipitation makes this one of the sunniest and driest months of the entire year. Having said that, October will bring a few more complications when it comes to planning compared to summer. By the end of the month, quite a few of the mountain cable cars and lifts are starting to close down for maintenance, including the lift to Grindelwald Fierst. But all in all, October, which is the sixth least expensive month to visit, might just be an all around bargain. With fall colors on display and mushrooms to pick and wild game in the restaurants, there's a lot to love about October in the Alps. What can we say about November? For starters, it seems to have a bit of an identity crisis. It'll make you think it's autumn and it'll try to convince you it's winter and sometimes both at the same time. The average high temperature is 45 degrees, but you might see days with highs in the low 30s and others with highs in the low 60s. The amount of sunshine also drops quite a bit, though you likely won't see huge amounts of precipitation either. Gray, misty fog might be the best picture of the average day in November, but November is also the third cheapest month according to Airbnb. Most of the summer trains and cable cars have shut down by this point, and even the Schilthorn goes into maintenance mode partway through the month. Jungfrau Yoke is open 365 days a year, but even a visit there could be more complicated. Both the Eiger Express from Grindelwald and the mountain train from Wengen to Kleine Scheidegg are closed for part of the month, meaning it could take you up to an hour longer than normal to reach Jungfrau Yoke, depending on where you're staying. Travelers just like you have asked us tons of questions about when to visit, what the weather's like, and what to do if the lifts are closed. And this video and our free download are made to give you a realistic picture of what it's like to visit Interlaken during each month of the year. Just want to remind you that you can find that link in the description below, but first let's talk about the final month of the year. If Christmas markets, mulled wine, puffy coats, and snow sound charming to you, then you're probably going to love December. I don't think we need to tell you that it's going to be cold, with average high temperatures in the upper 30s, but that's what gets you in the holiday spirit, right? Unsurprisingly, the amount of sunshine drops along with the temperatures, but average precipitation for the month still remains pretty low. If you avoid the days surrounding Christmas and New Year's, then it's pretty budget friendly, with Airbnb ranking it as the second cheapest month to visit. Though the first half of the month still has quite a few closures, all the major ski areas, including Grindelwald Fierce and the Schiltorn, will be open by the end of the month and waiting your visit. So if you like the holiday season and know how to pack your layers, then December and the Swiss Alps could be an experience unlike anything you've had before. We're all about helping you maximize your trip to Switzerland while minimizing your budget and planning time. So here are some bonus tips that'll help you decide when to visit based on specific priorities and activities. We get lots of questions like, when is the best time to visit the Swiss Alps? Well, that's an impossible question to answer, and really any time of year here can be beautiful, but here's what we think you probably mean. Wildflowers in bloom, green alpine meadows, and waterfalls filled to the brim with snowmelt. To enjoy scenes like these that inspired so many great authors like Tolkien, the best time to visit is the springtime, specifically mid-April to mid-June. Giesbach Falls will be raging, the Spruits and Stabach Falls will be plunging mightily, and the entire Lauterbrunnen Valley will look like a fantasy. No, really, it's gorgeous in the springtime. That's why they call it the Valley of 72 Waterfalls. If you're looking for the best combination of springtime beauty with open hiking trails, look to the month of June. Although if you come early in the month, all of the highest alpine trails may not quite be open yet, but you will still find plenty of places to keep all of your senses busy. If you're like us and you love hiking way up in the mountains, then plan your visit sometime from June to September. A word of caution about June though, Snow sometimes covers trails above 2,000 meters well into the month. So if it's really important to you to have the best trails at your disposal, you might want to wait until at least the second half of June. And if you're looking for fewer crowds and perhaps a lower budget, the first half of September has proved to be a great time to visit. You're less likely to experience extreme temperatures, 
the weather's a little more stable and the snow usually hasn't returned even at higher elevations. Now, if the hiking you're interested in isn't so high in the mountains, mid-May to mid-June and mid-September to mid-October could be a great choice as well. But just don't count on being able to hike trails above 17 or 1800 meters, though depending on the year, it might be possible. It goes without saying that if you like to swim in the lakes and you're not cold-blooded, July and August are the best times to visit. Enjoying a nice boat ride on Lake Toon or Lake Brienz can happen anytime from mid-April until the last week or so of October. This entire time is also perfect for lakeside strolls. If you love winter wonderlands, but winter sports aren't your reason for traveling, then it's hard to imagine a better time to visit than December, when Christmas markets and decorations are in full swing and the charm level is dialed up to a 10 out of 10. If winter sports are your jam, then it's hard to beat January and February, although February is particularly busy due to school breaks. So December and March might offer fewer crowds and better prices. Admittedly, we aren't skiers. Yeah, yeah. And we haven't yet visited during the winter months, but we wanted to share our perspective with you based on our own experience, as well as tons of research. Our goal is to help you travel Switzerland with confidence by reducing your planning time and stretching your budget. And that's exactly what this free download does. So go check out that link now and we'll see you in Switzerland.